back, Fishings fans. It's Ready Player Will here. This is Lightning Review Part 2. Today we're going over the class job overview, the AI and auto prioritization, my TMR review, and then the general thoughts combining both of what we saw in Part 1 and Part 2 all together. Now getting into the class job overview here, passive ability wise, she's got a couple that can be applied in a few different scenarios. One really standing out here is Mark of the Lassie that increases the agility by 12%, and because of her base agility being so high, this actually is very impactful to her overall speed, while also increasing her defense penetration by 40, a necessary and vital part of her damage output. Now after this, my second favorite is probably Viking Lord just for the extra bulk and the attack stat, which she is tied for highest attack in the game, so that also vastly increases her killing power, but there is a case to be made for long range and sniper mastery depending upon the map and how far you're trying to lean into her missile build profile. But overall, a lot of different passives here that can change the offensive orientation of how she acts as a character. Now when we get into the counter abilities here, counter siphon is by far the best ability here. 30% chance to proc. It's a missile based type attack with a range height of 2 and a spacing of 3 while also increasing her AP by 20 which is incredibly important. Many of her abilities are rather expensive and although she does have a AP reduction mechanic due to her mass ability we're going to see in a couple sides here overall getting the extra 20 ap here is very very important for sustaining her damage uptime now we look at the main job here looking at the buffs first for the knight of light ready to pursue is an excellent buff here where it reduces the damage taken 50 percent for three times so it is a shield mechanic it also increases her slash and missile resistance by 25 percent for three turns which is separate from the three times of the shield so both have different timing elements to it it also allows her to cast the follow-up attack which is the pursuit ability which is the typeless 50% modifier damage attack, which is a basically anti-courage mechanic. And this scales entirely off for attack stat. It is a great source of extra damage potential on following up on attacks. The second one here is exceptionally good as well, but will get you into trouble a little bit, where it's a teammate buff that increases agility by 25% for herself and allies, the 30% increase in accuracy for the allies and herself as well, while also restoring 10 AP. Why well, I say it could get you in trouble, this is the kind of buff where she will run in circles, making sure that everyone near her gets it so you really have to be smart with your ai and your turn order overall but both of these are ex exceptionally good buffs when utilized properly. Now we look at the main job for the offensive abilities, a lot of things to like here. Spark Strike, her main ability is a slash in peril of 25% for three turns. And the important mechanic to remember, and I have these small little numbers in black here, her mastery ability reduces the cost of all abilities in her kit by 15%. So this 15 AP cost is really 13. This next ability, Life Siphon 2, it's really 28 AP, not the 32. So this is a very valuable mechanic for the economy of her ability usage on that Topic. Life Siphon 2 is an exceptionally good ability here where it's a missile scaling attack, increases her defense penetration further by another 40 for three turns. It does have really good range and a very wide AoE spread, both heights of one. And there's a mechanic here that when you kill an enemy, you will regenerate 15 AP for each enemy you kill up to two. So again, another great mechanic for being able to retain how much AP she has so she can kill things really quickly. Barrier Buster, obviously great for people that are trying to utilize a shield mechanic against her. And then finally, Scar is actually like my least favorite ability here. Sure, it's a 200% modifier, but I actually don't like the ability effect of the 50% chance to slow on critical hit because quite honestly, she's not a big critical hit character. You can build her that way, and sure, it's going to happen, obviously, inevitably, but to say it's a reliable part of her kit, I don't think that's the adjective I would use. It's really more random whether or not that slow effect actually gets applied or not because her crit chance typically will skew a little bit on the lower side of things compared to at least like the top tier characters. As far as damage goes, it's still a really impactful ability. Now for the sub job here, Knight of Light, this is another decent one. I don't know if I love it though. Break launch is great for the disabled potential, but that also exists on the sub job, so you're not really gaining a lot here, but it's slasher type damage versus the missile type attack on the sniper sub job. Spatial side is a, an interesting one from the attack and magic debuff perspective, but Lightning's job is to kill things incredibly quickly. I don't know if the debuff here really adds anything to her kit in terms of what she wants to do damage wise. So while well, good, probably not my favorite, it's really the sniper sub job that I think is my favorite personally. There's a couple good buffs on here between target and target share. We'll talk about that more in a couple slides here. But I like this more from the perspective that these are all range height of five, which when you talk about being able to hit enemies at all times from all directions, this is where they have a little bit upside compared to the missile scaling attack on her main job, which is a, a uh, height of one. So these have far more actual trajectory implications in being able to hit your enemies. Now, although I love Dispel Spread here on the sub job, it's actually not going to get used as often as you might think, if only because when you're talking about how the AI works, the Storm Siphon ability in the main job 
Both of these are both 200% modifier, but that one in the main job is a 40% defense penetration buff as well. So when the game calculates which one does more damage, it's going to default to the Storm Siphon one, particularly because it's also a much wider AoE. So you're probably going to hit more enemies within it, which is more total damage. So though I like this option, I don't see it being used as often as you might like. But as we said, this one has much better height flexibility. So in those cases where there are enemies at varying heights, sure, she will probably prioritize this over a handful of others. So I still do still really like it it is a big feather in her cap why i prefer the sniper sub job also just in, in addition to the cheaper slow shard and arm shard although i i think those do get kind of risky with their range but i think damage potential wise she's still going to opt for the main job abilities now we get into the third one here the viking sub job this one's fair it's just relatively mundane doesn't really do anything much better than her main job already does out of all the abilities here i think launch is probably the one you're using primarily just because of the extra crit rate chance and how much damage that'll do for the 14 ap overall now we talk about her limit break this is just a uh, nutty amazing tank busting it's gonna make all the tanks cry when they see this ability overall not only is it 40 percent slash resistance penetration for three turns but it's also a 38 percent lightning apparel while also being a triple hit ability that is an insane amount of utility and damage on one limit break now although it is single target so sure it's only one battle and you need to make sure you hit it on the right person to get full value this is an incredible thing to absolutely destroy any tank that's in your face only 37 ap because of her ap cost reduction as well which we're seeing on the mastery ability here she wants to get the lightning attack of five which is part of her damage output it's relatively immaterial but I, they're obviously skewing toward amplifying lightning attack on all of her abilities not just slash or missile in particular that applies to all the lightning attacks but the decreased ap consumption of 15 is really valuable for her now we get into the ai and auto prioritization target share on the sniper job is actually her number one buff priority so i would recommend having that off on auto although it's a good buff you do not want that above some of the other ones here relentless assault which is the teammate buff is the second highest priority one her personal tmr the, with the end spark ability actually is her third priority which i think is interesting and she actually will move to a teammate to make sure she's also included in that buff that tmr as we're going to see in a second does have some range to cast on teammates in front of you but when given the chance she will include herself in it which is really great ready to pursue two is incredibly important again that's the ability that gives her the shield the follow-up attack and the slash and missile type resistances so seeing it fourth here or really even third that's actually very very risky that you might not get that off in time before the team fight starts so you have some legitimate decisions to be made here when it comes to whether or not you even want to put on a tmr that works because you do not want to spam relentless assault and then a tmr and then never get to use ready to pursue that's not optimizing her in the least rebellious spirit and target on the sub jobs are also then prioritized last so you do have some things to think about here when picking her opening rotation and how she moves to teammates now for the TMR analysis, this is a really high octane offensive TMR. The stats on it are nice. The 38 attack, not really meaning much. That's really more for PVE potential. The crit rate of 8 is good, not material. And crit of 8 of 12 actually is something. So that's a legitimate good stat on here. It is a double cast TMR, very valuable. Great range potential here as an AoE for teammates and self. But in terms of offensive potency, 30% attack for everyone there and 25 lightning attack is a huge 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 damage boost to lightning in particular because if you are looking at her buffs on the main job she has neither lightning attack up nor attack percent buff up so this will vastly increase the damage that she does already in her base form really just making sure you tune your ai properly to use everything that you want to use now my general thoughts about lightning overall uh, exceptional damage output that's genuinely hard to defend 40 defense penetration on the passive another 40 on the life siphon ability for three turns that's 80 defense penetration another 10 from a trust on passive puts her at 90 so physical tanks basically stand no chance from, from the defense perspective if you want to put on a physical barrier great she's going to break that anyway slash resistance penetration of 40 on the limit break the esther vision card is also another 35 so you're talking 75 percent slash resistance penetration she's also got the 38 percent lightning in peril on that limit break the 25 percent slash resistance in peril on spark strike so no matter what kind of resist you put on your character she has a myriad of different ways she can just ignore it so she's just going to hack and slash the heck out of you the entire time she does have excellent buffs with ap management in mind that one of them gives her 10 ap her counter ability also restores the 10 ap when she kills an enemy she also gets ap so there are some mechanics to make sure that you use so that she can keep 
disability uptime up. She does fit in perfectly with the lightning profile of Slash and Missile, like exactly what they've always been tuned to do. She just does it better to some degrees. Valuable follow-up attack there, as we saw, for the anti-courage. And her attack stat does get high enough that it viably could be anti-re-raise as well. A little more uh, math-oriented there, whether or not it actually kills them, but certainly possible. Good missile range potential as well. Probably not what I'd recommend to build for, but she does have a range plus one passive and the target buff is also range plus one so if you had an exceptionally long map and you just wanted to be able to chunk down enemies from afar with missile type attacks with either cloud or fred she's certainly able to be built to do that too so some nice variety there she does also have exceptional speed potential due to the high base agility i'm going to talk about that more in part three into what she can get up to and then finally it really just comes down to which team kills faster uh, as the penetration mechanics make it virtually impossible to defend against economically like if you put a lot of vision cards and equipment and espers into certain kinds of like slash resistance or defense you're obviously it's going to mean nothing when she can ignore 90 percent of the defense so it really comes down to which team kills the other one faster and that's where she really shines these kinds of penetrations will last a really long time in the game in terms of value so it's nice that it exists and overall she really is a great addition to the lightning cast in my opinion she probably does replace cloud in most instances but again they're two very different kinds of characters as well at the end of the day you could really replace her with almost any lightning unit in any comp it really just depends on the map and who you're facing against so that's the lightning part two review in a nutshell hopefully those of you are enjoying putting her to work so far that's it for now and i will have part three out as soon as i can i'll talk to you all soon